What's up, everybody? This is Loop Community Reason Trainer, Carlos Ramirez, uh, continuing a tutorial on a track that we um, we started last video, uh, which was creating a simple beat in Reason and exporting to uh, import into your DAW of choice. Um, so today, what we're going to go over is an intro to mixing. Um, basically, got the same track finished. Um, I've disabled anything in the sequencer window uh, having to do with automation, uh, as well as, um, as you can see here, on my mixer window, disabled any compression or equalization, including filters, um, bypassed all inserts, and muted the one effect send that we have going on. So the only thing I didn't do was um, I didn't set the faders to Unity, but it's all good. So before we get into that, uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the track, and um, while I'm playing the track, I'm going to um, uh, enable everything again. But I want to talk about mixing first. Um, so when you're mixing, um, essentially what you're trying to do is create an acoustic space. Um, even somebody with an untrained ear can tell if a mix is bad. And the reason why that is, is because your brain knows that sound needs to work a certain way in any given acoustic space. Um, so, and, and with that said, the reality is there are really no rules. I mean, you know, I've heard good mixes that have broken the rules in terms of that uh just the concept of a, an acoustic space and sometimes it sounds cool you know sometimes it doesn't make sense um but sometimes it's cool so you know what trained mixers know how to do they know how to create an acoustic environment within uh, you know an analog or digital realm uh, which has to do with multi-track recording, etc. So, um, just a few concepts to understand, and I'm going to divide it up. I know, you know, everybody, under or a lot of people understand the human hearing range is 20 hertz to 20k. So, we're not going to get that crazy. Um, I'm just going to divide it up into the four bands of a parametric equalizer, um, which is the low frequency, the low mid frequency, the high mid frequency, and the high frequencies. Um, so just right off the bat, um, for me, a huge thing is bass. Um, bass really determines the distance of your tracks and what i mean by that is um i like to to compare it to the uh, frank sinatra recordings you know you know frank sinatra was up on that mic and his band was several feet away and the reason why you know that is because of proximity effect, um, which has to do with directional mics. Um, proximity effect is basically the closer you get to a directional mic, the more the bass builds up. Um, so a lot of times you'll be listening to a mix and the mixer has decided to make certain things closer or farther and they've cut out the high end to make it sound closer or they've boosted the low end or they've cut uh they boosted the low end to make it sound closer 
they've cut out the low end to make it sound further, etc., etc. So, you know, really a great mixer knows how to work with low frequencies as well as the the mid frequencies. The reality is that's the key to to I mean, all the frequencies have to do with this, but particularly the mid frequencies often have to do with great tone bringing out the tone bringing out the timbre of an instrument uh sometimes for some reason what you know depending on what kind of gear you're using uh transformers tubes tape they all accentuate or take away potentially from uh the timbre of an instrument etc so you know, to the human ear, all these things m- may sound pleasant or unpleasant, pleasant depending on the application. So, um, yeah, just a little, I don't know if it's too uh, abstract, but essentially your brain wants to hear a recording that makes sense in terms of emulating an acoustic space. Uh, And that, again, like I said, that's a general statement. Uh, No holds barred when it comes to mixing, you know? Um, So, let's move forward. So, I'm going to play the track. I got it on loop right here. And um, the song, I didn't arrange it in blocks. Um... And I I sometimes don't do that because, well, just because. But um, it is what it is. So I'm going to enable everything as it's playing. So here goes nothing. Here it's it's pretty muddy. Got all automation taken care of. Um, turn on compressors. We'll go through filters. You can see I, um, in fact, I'm going to take off the bypass on the loop just because we talked about this last time. Actually, I'm going to take the bypass off the inserts off of the loop and the 8-bit. So you can kind of hear, I mean, I really cut out uh, some of the high end off of this 8-bit. Actually, it's in the inserts, but I'm not going to open that up right now. Um, Alright, so let's see what else we got here. This. 
and then our EQs. I got a lot of processing on the master bus. Like I said, the master insert, I have a lot of processing. I love to do a lot of bus processing for tone and corrective EQ. I mean, I do it on individual tracks, but bus processing in terms of mixing is one of my favorite things. And we'll probably go, in fact, we will go over that at another tutorial because um, it's important to know, to understand bus processing um, especially if you're going to be bouncing your tracks or printing your tracks out uh, it's, it's similar or it's basically the concept is taken from uh, printing stems from an analog console um, okay so here got some mid side going on there as well And also have some sidechain compression going on over here. After I have a, I have a. This is just to. I have this um, Kong right here, and uh, this kick drum right here. I have aux one going to the side. Chain. You almost can't hear it, but all right. I don't think it's clipping, but just check it. Anyway, all right. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. For me, uh, mixing includes automation. Uh, automation is awesome. Uh, it really brings your tracks to life. If you're not automating, you should try and do it. It's pretty cool. Um, one thing to kind of point out, as you can see, there's a lot of things uh, centered, which to this track is pretty... Um, the reason why I did that, I got this panned a little bit right here. This thing's kind of going crazy sometimes. Um, but I got it panned um, kind of to the right. Um, but things like the Kong, I have things panned in the Kong. Uh, the loop I left center, 808 a little bit to the left. Um, it really was wide and uh, open wide by the mid-side processing. But... Uh, important to note that panning is also underrated. You've got to pan. Um, it really lends your mix to fit, like I said, in its own acoustic space. A anyway, um, hope this uh, video has been helpful. Uh, if you got any questions, you can hit me up at the stereo. I'm sorry, Carlos at loopcommunity.com. Um, all right, this is Carlos signing out for Loop Community and hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.